Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome back. And that there was Muse and a cracking song called Uprising, a few years old now. And there's a lot of talk about the uh, lead singer of Muse becoming a bit of a tone coat because if you listen to the lyrics to a lot of the songs, they're quite anti-establishment. And they were sort of pro 9-11 truth for a long time, themselves believing that 9-11 was an inside job. And, of course... The guy's done an about tone and says, no, it wasn't an inside job. You know, you don't make up your mind. I think he was got to by the, the moguls of the music industry who told him, look, at the line of your out. But um, that's the way the world works, folks. Anyway, I do have Alan and Steve on the line. Good evening, lads. Are you there? Good evening, yeah. Mick. How are you doing? Good evening, Mick. Self. Good evening, Steve. How are you? Grand. You're looking that's well good. yourself. Oh, you're looking great yourself. You're a grand face for radio, lads. You really have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure whether I have a voice for radio, but we, we live with that. I oh, know you have a voice for radio, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I just I listen to your shows quite a lot, and I'm probably one of your biggest fans, lads, as you know. And you certainly have got a voice for radio. You, see, you speak the truth, that's the only voice you need. Whether you think you sound good or not is irrelevant. It's the information that you give out, lads, and that's what's, that's what's most important, I suppose, you know. That's it, that's it. Well, like yourself, Mick, um, you, you do a great show, you have great people on the show, and you get the truth out there, and that's what really what it's all about. That's, what all, we're, that's all we're trying to do, is get the truth, the truth out there and let people hear what's going on. Well, that's it. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the new website I'm starting to put together. It, 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 I'm hosting it on WordPress at the moment. It's for this show, the world you don't know. And uh, the tagline of the actual website is getting the truth out one show at a time. That's it. That's all it's about. We, we can only do what we can do. And uh, with the limited resources that we have, that's all we can do. But we're doing a hell of a lot more than the mainstream media, media are doing. The ones that, you, you know, the general public look towards for the truth. I mean, all you're getting is propaganda. You just have to look at the news in the last few days. Where you know Britain going to war now on another lie, and you know people are just buying all of this bloody stuff. Well, it's just to again, people need to uh, query, a question, and look in, do the research, and not just accept everything verbatim that the mainstream media do. I mean, we say we we're telling people the truth. We're telling people the truth as we know it at that time. Mm. That might change in a week's time, and new information might come out. But at that time, when we broadcast and we talk about it. To us, that's what we know as the truth. Mm. Now, it's, the last few days, I've been keeping an eye um, quite a lot on, on Facebook and other social media outlets in regards to the, the amount of, um, I suppose, bully boy tactics now that have been employed by the, the water meter installation companies and now they have on Garda Shea Connor, who are supposed to be guardians of the peace, getting quite brutal. And I mean, this is not just hearsay. There's video evidence of this posted on Facebook where you can see the guards getting very, very heavy-handed. Now, there was even one guard there the other day. He was asked, was he acting upon his oath? He said, no. He was asked, what, well, what are you here for? To protect the, work, the, the workers and the company, the private corporations. Yeah, but he was only doing that to antagonise. Well, I know. I, I gathered that he was trying to antagonise one of the... I'm not even going to say protest. It's one of the citizens who was standing up for their sovereign rights. Exactly, and it's, it is getting ridiculous. I'm going to pass over to Steve because Steve was posting some stuff on Facebook about this. So, Steve, if you want to talk about what you were posting up there. Yeah, no, I've seen that video as well, uh, Mick, about uh, that, that guard uh, being asked, was he on his oath, and, and him directly turning around and saying no. Whether he was joking or not, I think it was completely in bad taste because he knew that he was being recorded. And as I'm sure the guard is here, they all know that people are recording this it's our it's our only way of gathering evidence it, it, it is our evidence you know so i mean he, he should have he should have acted i think in a more professional manner he should have said yes i am on my oath but you know he, okay he said what he said but yeah i i was again i was in work today haven't really heard too much of what's been happening until like i'm home and my my darling wife informed me uh, during the dinner conversation that uh, did you hear she said about the Edenmore 9 the, the water protesters I said no I haven't actually heard anything um, because I, I don't read I don't read the paper I don't listen to mainstream for the for the reasons I've mentioned a, a hundred times before but she was well, telling me it's okay to listen to the mainstream if you're, if you're looking for a bit of comedy I suppose if you're looking for a bit of comedy yeah yeah absolutely uh, like Alan, Alan Shatter on, on, on the Late Late Show that was that, that was funny but uh, yeah, I she said that was quite funny. All right, I was. I mean, Jesus, he looked like it's amazing because I've seen, I've seen. I don't want to get too off topic, but I've seen that man before, 
and he the stern face he he was the he was the voice and the and the, the face of power ultimate power that, that that's what he commanded and when i seen him doing his little interview there on the late late show on friday night he looked like a little puppy dog someone who you just wanted to pick him up and cuddle him and uh, cuddle him and pet him you know he he was <laughs> really pull, pulling one over on the the citizens of, of this country Go back yeah, I to think Tony done his best as opposed to give him a bit of a grilling, but I mean, he works for the mainstream media as well. Okay. So he's, he, you know, I think it was he was going to make it look like he was giving him a grilling, but it was yeah. only so far he was going to go anyway. Exactly. I mean, look, you know as well as I do, the questions are uh, they're, they're they're discussed before they they even go live, and so there was no audience questions anyway. So uh, you know, it was completely biased as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, if there was audience questions, and I would say he would have been cut off guard as well. You know. Oh, absolutely. He, he you know, he would have had to have his wits about him then. But getting back to the the the, the Eden Moore nine protests, as my, say my my wife discussed with me there over the the dinner this evening. She said it, it had it had been on mainstream media that they were up in court, and as we all know, that there was an injunction. Uh, placed on them to stop them from protesting, and then this this injunction was was to, to cover everyone in, in on the the island. Uh, but she was telling me there today that they were the the nine appeared in court. The injunction was lifted because even the judge and I don't know I don't know who the judge was, uh, and hopefully this is a kind of a taste of what's to come. But even he could see that this injunction was against their constitutional rights. That we do have a constitutional right to protest and even he was was wise enough to see that this injunction it, it, it went it went against the grain so it had to be lifted so i think it, it, we we may not have won the the the, the war yeah, well, I, think the, I think the contractors are going to look for you know for other means and ways of i suppose getting back at the protesters because they, for a start they'll lose a money hand over this because they're getting no work done you know yeah yeah i, I think that's the biggest gripe is that they're getting no work done i mean they were in crumlin recently and fair play to the, the Crumlin says no against water meters protest group. They beat them hands down. I think they managed to install one meter and that was it. And they left Crumlin and they went to Drimina and a, a big anti or anti water meter movement sprung up there very quickly, you know. So, I mean, it's a good thing because every time you see them moving in somewhere around the city, people seem to be standing up. But it seems to me that it's, it's mostly working class estates, you know, the more affluent estates seem to be allowing her in obviously because they can probably afford to pay the water charges exactly yeah well i mean may, maybe they can or maybe they don't realize they can protest because you know as well as i do that a lot of these people as we've already said they get their news and their information from the broadsheets the red tops mm. they get it from mainstream media the you know rte uh, but i think they they probably didn't know that they could protest they probably d- you know, thought that they might be on their own if they protested, but with all these videos popping up all over the internet, and you know, protest, it's coming to an estate near you. Whoever you are listening to this program tonight, it's coming. It, there will be a protest. Uh, and maybe people are starting to wake up and they're saying, "Hang on a second, there was a massive protest in Tala, Edenmore, Kilbarrick, Rohini, and it wasn't reported on the news." Maybe, maybe, maybe that could start waking people up as well. I mean, one thing I've noticed now myself, Steve, lately. Uh, in relation to the the no contract return to sender concept, everybody is talking about it on Facebook. I mean, people who wouldn't have a blind bit of interest in the kind of shows that we're doing, but they're all getting on board now because it's hitting them directly in the pocket. You see, so people are getting out there now, and the good thing about it is because they're learning about um, no contract return to sender and the concept that surrounds all of that. That's leading them then on to great websites like your own, great websites like People's Internet Radio, and the whole sovereignty thing do you know what i mean yeah totally bring them down that way right exposure it's bringing them down that road there was something sorry mick there was something on facebook there the other day and apparently it's from an insider saying they received 350 returned uh, envelopes with from people who obviously don't want to um contract with irish water now there's other people that have destroyed the paperwork or burnt it but even 350,000. And Irish Water are kind of pulling their hair out. Now, something that you just said, uh, you just mentioned earlier there, Mick, which you're, you were bang on the money with. Noam uh, Chomsky, I put up a, a, a thing on Facebook and I said, and this is apparently one of his sayings, and he said, it's pretty ironic that the so-called least advantaged people are the ones taking the lead in trying to protect all of us, while mm. the richest and most powerful among us are the ones who are trying to drive the society to destruction. It, but that's very, very true. I mean, you couldn't have put it better yourself. That's you know, and it, you just have to look around the world, even in, well, I suppose what's going on in Hong Kong now at the moment, that's, 
you know, that's a, a different kettle of fish. I think there's that's pretty much engineered because if you look, I was watching Sky News there today and the Chinese even, they're warning the English, stay over at affairs. And I think that, you know, if it starts kicking off in Hong Kong, the English will start poking their arm in like they are everywhere bloody else in the world. And that could lead on to something much, much bigger. But, but um, coming back to, to like Ireland, you're right, it is the working man on the street, it is the, the, the hardest hit are, who are doing the most protests and are being the most vocal about all of this. Yeah, of course. And, you know, one thing that myself and Steve um, have said before, and I think Steve, you know, I mean, we have our own opinions on certain things, but I think Steve is probably in agreement with the whole direct democracy process, not so much the party, but the actual direct democracy process, which our forefathers gave us in 1919 Constitution. And we need to have that. And if the parties that you're voting for, I don't know who these people are voting for the mainstream parties, Really, really, well, I really the elections are rigged anyway. I don't think you know when you see these Red Sea polls or these Gallup polls that are done and saying Fianna Gael is way ahead in the polls or Fianna Fáil away in the polls. I think most of that information is just bullshit. They throw it into the media and the masses just swallow a hook, line, and sinker. Exactly. I mean, they must have an interest in the parties because you know, with everything that's going on in Ireland and with the protests and everything else, how can you be that you know, have that tunnel vision and not see what's going on? And see people struggling and, you know, worrying about debt. I mean, I was down in uh, Trim Court. You probably heard, Mick. I went down to support the Land League and the Hub down in Trim Court last Monday. I didn't and, hear that, no. Yeah, we went, myself and a friend went down and there was a group of us there from the Land League and from the Hub. And basically, there was about 80 cases and most of the people there didn't turn up. And it was all got to do with repossessions. And the people that did turn up, where we kind of grabbed them, we ran out and then, you know, gave them the paperwork and said, contact the Hope and Land League, they'll help you for free. But those people going in there and they were just kind of nodding their head and they didn't have a clue what was going on. They did, they, there wasn't even an objection to the, to the registrar when one of the... Um, one of the uh, firm of solicitors there, um, I kind of fondly named him uh, Gobshite and Gobshite. Um, basically, they was sticking on a fine of 750 or a fee of 750 euros plus VAT. Um, and the woman was just nodding her head. And this, it's, it's a, it's a exactly. massive Ponzi scheme and it's a game. And if you go in there and you try and take these people on and you know nothing, at least, they, I mean, they literally know nothing about the law, they're going to lose. And all oh, you had to do is go up and say, I have a defence, I'll be back. And the, the court case would have been adjourned and they would have had time to prepare. But they didn't yeah. even know to do that. And it all comes down to information. Listen, lads, I need to go to a quick set of ads. Do you mind holding on the line? Yeah, no okay. problem. Go ahead. And if you don't mind muting your mic, uh, just for the duration of the ads, that we really No problem. Well, folks, we'll be back in two minutes. We're Alan and Steve from all way and Talk to us all shortly. Lippy Sound, 96.4 FM. You're tuned to Lippy Sound, 96.4 FM, Lucan's own community radio station. Thanks to you, our listeners, Lippy Sound has the highest listenership of any community station in Dublin. We are a not-for-profit organization run by volunteers. Please spread the word to family and friends. And if you or anyone else is interested in volunteering, please contact us at info at lippysoundfm.ie. Thanks for listening. From Lucan, to Lucan, for Lucan. This is Lippy Sound, 96.4 FM. Now, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're very welcome back. Um, Alan and Steve, are you still with me? We are, yeah. Yep. Lovely, that's grand. Listen, I had a great listen to your show last night. I really enjoyed last night's show. Um, the, the guest you had on, um, Laura Eisenhower, was that her name? That's right, yeah, Laura Eisenhower, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely fascinating guest. I mean, she was into some very, very esoteric and out there concepts, wasn't she? About regarding where you know where the human race is coming from and where it's going. Oh, it's uh, unbelievable. I mean, we only just um, had to scratch the surface of the information that she knows about, and that's why we're going to have to do a part two with her because she has so much information to give out, and we have you know very, very li we've limited time. Um, with uh, our guests. So we normally have people like Randy Kay, uh, Captain uh, Randy Kay, who came on the show before that. Again, that, that's going to have to be a part two. Yeah. Yeah, I, and so, you know, these, these people have just been, you know, seen and done, I have the T-shirt. And trying to get all the information out in an hour and a half is practically impossible. So why, hence why we need part two. 
I mean, it's the same for me with, with my shows. You know, you get a good guest on, namely people like yourselves or whatever. And then now it, it, it never really is enough because, you know, it, it probably takes you a good 35, 40 minutes to start warming up. And then when you're really getting into something, boom, the show is over. You know, it can be, it can be quite frustrating. Um, I just want to give out the phone number for the show, lads. 0876271338 for text messages. And I do want to say a quick hello to Ray Muir, who I know is over in the UK listening right now. We just sent a message via Skype. So hello to you, Ray. Now, lads, um, I want to talk a little bit more now about international. Um, affairs, what's going on particularly over in the Middle East how you see all of this playing out I mean, we've spoken about ISIS before and what a scam we all think that is I mean, it's just as bad as Al-Qaeda pre-9-11 and there's been a lot of talk lately as well about an, another, like a 9-11 type event I don't know if you've seen recently about regarding the Georgia Guidestones that there's been a new stone inserted in them and there's there's quite a flurry on the internet regarding this new stone because the year 2014 is engraved into the stone. Have you been, are you aware of that? Yeah, I've I've seen the the video. They've actually taken that back out now. There's a video of the guy climbing the ladder, taking the stone out, and then smashing it up with a hammer and giving people out pieces of the actual stone. And oh, so, um, is that a protest or something? Is it? No, no. It was the guy that actually maintains the stone. He just he was told to go down and take the stone out, which is which is what he did. And when people were were saying that they wanted to buy it, he said, "Do you want a bit?" And he he got the old hammer out and broke up the stone and gave gave everybody a bit of the stone. I, I hadn't seen that. And do you think there's any significance? I mean, I don't know whether the Georgia guys down to, you know, a, a genuine prediction of the, the you know the future of the world. I mean, you 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 know full well that the first commandment on it, and written in ten languages, saying that they want to maintain humanity under a figure of five. 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Well, you know, in I, order to get to that figure, you need to kill five and a half, six billion people. Well, I definitely think there is a eugenics program on to reduce the population. That's a given. And these people at the top do think that they are the ultimate um, and they're the more superior race. And we are just um, Goyim, if you want to call them, um, cannon fodder and just people, they can do what they want with us. And that's the, way they, that's the way they perceive it. And I was, funny enough, talking to John Irwin, who's a super soldier, who's going to be on in November. And he has a, a very big take on this. And basically, um, he's working with Sean Stone, who's the son of Oliver Stone, the Hollywood director. And right. they're going to be working on the documentary. And John's going to give them the information, he said, that will just blow your mind. When you realize what it's all about, he said, people don't know this information. They're being, you know... Even, even the likes he said, Kerry Casty and all, he said she's been doing it a long time and she's still no nearer to what, what's really going on. And because John was a super soldier and was involved in it, and he was involved in taking out the New World Order in the 50s and 60s, he said that this documentary is going to expose everything. But he wants to make sure that certain things are in secured in his background before that is released because he's going to be putting his neck on the line. Now, do, you, do you think that the, the likes of this guy like, are genuine or do you think they're just you know, jumping on the internet bandwagon as it is? As oh, it well, were, you know? well, John is definitely a genuine man. I mean, I can, I can definitely vouch for John because I've spoken to him on numerous occasions on video conference. And um, and Steve has has been on. You've Steve, you've talked to John as well, haven't you? I have talked to John. John is he's one of those characters. He is so interesting. He's I, I think the, the, the time we had him on our show, Mick. We were just riveted to the chair with the information. I think we just wound John up and let him go, and he just edu- for as you know, our show runs for two hours. He just educated the socks off us. He's just he not, the guy knows so much, and not only does he know it, but he can prove it as well. You know that sort of way. Some people kind of sing from the same hymn sheet as other people, but this guy, he you know, if you you go to him, he's, he's extended an invitation to us. Come over," he said. "Not only will I, will will I tell you more information. I'll prove it to you. I'll show it to you. You know, he's real hands on." And here's mm. and Mick. Here's here's what John said to me today. He just reminded me. He said, "Alan," he said, "the three things you have to ask the people you interview is this: why, what for, and prove it." He said. They're the three questions you ask anybody that you interview, why, what for, and prove it. He said, if they can't answer them three questions, he said, then don't take what they're saying. That, he's an English guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's a, he's a, basically yeah. John was trained. His training was above and beyond the SAS. He was in the elite of the elite. and he's well, a I think I've seen him interviewed on, if I'm not mistaken, richplanet.net with, um, oh, what's the guy's name now? Richard D. Hull. 
Richard D. Hall, that's the guy, yes. I, I think he, I'm nearly sure he interviewed that guy and he was talking about him being a super soldier. And all. Now, I was listening to him, and I, like, I was quite fascinated with what he was saying and stuff like that, but, I mean, obviously I'd never heard of a super soldier before, you know. I mean, the only yeah. time I'd seen a super soldier is the likes of Van Damme and the movies and stuff. You know, you think it's all Hollywood. Yeah. But, and it's not, it doesn't apply to real life. But then I seen this guy coming along, and nearly everything that you see in the movies is regards to like, superhuman strengths and super soldiers. Mm -hmm. This guy is claiming that he was all of that. Well, if you go over to John's website, all the photos and everything are there and the information. John will prove it. I mean, he has the photos on his website, but he's invited me and Steve over. He said, you two come over here, he said, and he said, I'll show you stuff. He said, I'll prove to you what I'm saying is, is true. So there you go. You know, and is he the only like is the uh, is he the only super soldier out there, or is there more of them? Or like is there battalions of these guys out there? No, there was. There was there's, like, what have they been used for? There was well, there, there were sixteen of them. Uh, there's a book out called The Sixteen, which you can buy on Amazon, and John was one of the sixteen, and these guys were hired from inside the military. When the basically the, the very quick story, of this is that. Uh, in the, when John was young in his 19, 20, 21, when all the other soldiers were in the bar drinking, smoking and, and you know, meeting up the, with the women, John was in the gym training. He didn't drink, didn't smoke and train. And he was approached by somebody on the inside. They said, we want you to join a team and you want to, we're go you're going to be an elite team of 16 people who are going to be doing special projects. And then special projects were basically taking out people who were in the New World Order. And uh, do they, 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 they still exist? Like, I mean, you know, you, you hear about, um, like, Benjamin Fulford, I, like, I tend to follow his blogs, and, like, he's claiming that the New World Order, like, the cabal, as he would call them, are the, the, they are being taken out one by one. Like, there's this big war going on at the, you know, the very top of the, the power pyramid between, you know, this, I, I've mentioned this before, like, the so-called Illuminati in the West, and then you've got the, the White Dragon Society in the East, and that's where all this crap that's going on in the Middle East, but you know, it's, it's yeah. all related to it. You'd, you have to be very careful. I mean, one of the things that we read out on the show last night was the, the, the arrest of a thousand suspects um, across Europe. And it was at least 30 Romanian children have been saved from child traffickers and over 2,000 kilos of drugs have been seized. And they're looking to extend that operation in South America. Now, again, you know, the New World Order are very, very powerful and they're very good at propaganda and media and all that and manipulating people and threatening people and everything else. So you have to really take everything with a pinch of salt. Now, I'd like to think with everything changing and people we've got on the show, the majority of people are saying that, you know, the time is coming where there's changes on the planet and this, these things are happening. But like a trapped rat, the New World Order, these people don't want to give up what they have and they will fight to the end. So, you know, if they, if they just put down the guns and said, right, okay, we give up, we could move on. But at the moment, they're not. They're fighting. And because of that, it's taken longer to, you know, get rid of them. Now, they, obviously, we, I spoke about Nasara and the collateral. Yeah, I was going to mention that to you in a couple of minutes, Nasara, and hopefully we we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but yeah. Just before, before you do get to that, like did this... This um, stuff that's going on, say, for example, in the Middle East, one thing I've noticed about that is because I was watching it as it was emerging on Sky News, ISIS, but you know, the first time any of us had heard the word, but in the, the previous week prior to that, what was predominant in the news was the sex scandal surrounding politicians at Westminster, which was creeping all the way up to the top of the, the, the power structure in the UK, all the way to the royal family. And as soon as ISIS came up, that story was buried. And I couldn't help thinking, did they invent ISIS in order to bury that story. It's like the movie Wag the Dog. I don't know if you've seen that movie. I haven't seen it, no. I, I urge you to watch it. It's an absolutely fantastic film because it puts into perspective what's going on in the media today as regards like the Middle East, for example. Like I'll give you the, the, a quick premise of the movie was it was set in the mid-90s and you had an American president who was caught up in a Monica Lewinsky-type sex scandal. Mm. It was sort of like based around Bill Clinton and they needed a diversion for the American people because an election was coming up and Robert De Niro is the spin doctor for the president so he goes to Dustin Hoffman who's the big Hollywood producer and they invent a war in Albania that is not real but they put it on television and it looks like it's real like they have Sky News, Fox yeah. News all reporting this war that's going on so when I see all this stuff about ISIS the first thing that comes into my head is wag the dog yeah well look I wouldn't put it past them I really, you know, because it seems to be a, a boogeyman in every corner in the Middle East. You know, tomorrow's going to be different. They've had boogeyman. videos on the, on the news lately. No, I haven't seen any beheading videos. They're just coming out and saying, so-and-so's been beheaded. There was a video posted online, but you're not allowed to see it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, look, that in itself, you know, it's it's just ridiculous. It's again the boogeyman. It's all about fear. You know, there's only two emotions in, in the world. There's fear and love. And well, you have to yeah. we have to move away from the fear. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting nuts. Now, getting back to this Nassara, I've heard you talking about this quite a lot, and it's something I haven't looked into. Now, I do think I understand that it might have something to do with this global reset that you've been talking about lately on your shows as well. That's right. Do you have this to go to a news reset. break? Um, and if not, I have to go to ads in about five minutes. I've already done the news at the top of the hour, so. Oh, fine. Okay, no problem. I've got another five minutes before I need to go to some ads. Okay, I'll try and be very quick. Okay. No problem. I... I had a Skype call with Drake um, on Saturday just to confirm about this Nasara. Now, what we said on the show last night is that this is for entertainment purposes only because until it happens, don't believe it. Okay, but now, can you explain to the listeners who this Drake character is? He's some sort of whistleblower, isn't he? Yeah, basically, Drake Bailey came on the scene a few a couple of years ago on with uh, Kerry Casty and right. David Wilcock, and basically, he's an ex-military man who's involved with the American military, and he has an insider contacts with what's going on. Um, and he's linked with Neil Keenan, who's another chap who's involved with the global collateral accounts. Which yeah, Benjamin Fulford talks about him quite a lot, Neil Keenan. That's and right. some case that he's instigated in New York against the New World Order and the banking industry. That's it. Well, that's got to do with the actual collateral accounts. So basically, um, this Nassara um, has been going around for a long time. And basically, the Nassara has got to, be, got to do with treaties and bringing some kind of balance back to the to the to the to the planet or to the to America really because Nassara is for America and the collateral accounts are for the global for the planet and um, so basically Nassara was going to be released it's for the benefit of all people you know debt forgiveness and and all that kind of stuff and it was supposed to be talked about and released and mentioned on September the 11th 2001 and of course, we all know what happened then. The Twin Towers came down and Nassara was, and purposely that was done to stop Nassara from coming out. This is what they're saying. Okay. So mm. now that there's a lot of people who have jumped ship and now want to sort out um, things once and for all, their allegiance have changed. So Nassara has really got to do with, and my understanding has got to do with, as Drake said, got to do with treaties in America. But there's a, another global thing called the collateral accounts. And the powers to be and the, the New World Order are getting funding. They were getting funding from the collateral accounts. To fund who controls the collateral accounts? Well, this is the thing. Um, I'm not too sure. Well, I know who's controlling it now. Neil Keenan and his team is controlling it now. That's what all the lawsuits were and everything else got to do with that. Because we know the whole banking system is all a sham and usury. It's a big Ponzi scheme mm. and the debt will never be paid. I mean, 70 trillion um, in debt is America is in 70 trillion of debt the derivatives market is worth about 2 quadrillion and the interest is 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 just there's too much interest to pay on the money that's owed it'll never get paid so it the can't be paid. sorry it can't be paid it can't be paid it can't be paid you know when you have a credit card and you say you pay the minimum amount on the credit card well you'll never end you'll never pay that off because the interest will always be more than the payment so, and what's happened is because they were making payments to this money, this debt, the interest has overshadowed the actual payment that has to be made. So we'll never pay it off. So there has to be some kind of financial reset. And this is what they're talking about with the RV and the DNR and a lot of the currencies being reset. So the collateral accounts was where the funding was coming for the New World Order so they could actually fund the wars and everything else. So Neil Keenan and his team have now, are now in what they call lockdown. If you people want to go over to Neil Keenan's website, it's neilkeenan.com. And Neil is in lockdown. Basically, they've locked the collateral accounts so nobody can get access to them. And Drake was saying um, not so long ago, I think it was last year, Japan, who's a kind of, um, uh, kind of a steel pigeon for America, went in over to China and there was a bit of an argy-bargy about an island and apparently that was involved with the collateral accounts. Japan was trying to get at the collateral accounts to open them up again and China just kind of kicked them off the island um, to put it, you know, very quickly. So Neil Keenan is in lockdown now. He has a YouTube um, video on his website which he'll give an update on the lockdown and he talks about what's going on. Now, is this happening? I don't know. Apparently the Nasara, I'm watching the Nasara website, just out of curiosity, and mm. they're saying that the 1st of October. Now, the other thing they said was that 
The first, the first of October this year. Come on, like this, this is yeah. in a few days' time. Yeah, this is in a few days' time. It was it's going to be a, a financial reset. Yeah, it was, well, the Nasara will be released, and they're talking about a financial reset now. Drake said to to me, and on his latest podcast, he said things are going to get worse before they get better because when does when you can't get at your bank and can't get at your money. And if there is a power down as well, if there's a power outage for whatever reason, people will start st- struggling. They won't have money to buy food. They'll probably have f- very little food in. And if that goes on over a two-week period, then there's going to be people, maybe people who are desperate kicking down your door looking for food and all that kind of stuff. And he said, so that's why he said it'll get worse before it gets better. And um, so um, so he said, make sure you have a bit of food in and, and, and uh, water in and stuff for at least two weeks. Have a bit of cash in your pocket so at least you can use that to go down to the local shop if you need to get stuff. And hopefully, he said, it doesn't, doesn't go off, doesn't, uh, it doesn't take too long to do. While the systems, while the banking systems are being reset and everything's done. Now, he did, he did say that this will involve debt forgiveness, as in mortgages, loans, credit cards, etc. There's also something called the St. German Prosperity Funds, and I talked to him about that, and he said apparently everybody's supposed to get a certain sum amount of money. And right. um, but Sounds very interesting now. I mean, if it does come about, I mean, most people who are listening to this are probably saying, you know, these guys that are talking on the radio now are off the bloody heads. Well, look, I, no. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, you know, I'm just saying, that's why I'm saying it's for entertainment purposes only. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's a good um, caveat to put on it. Listen, I need to go to my last set of ads. There's something else I want to bring up now in re- in relation to these funds. And uh, an interview that I heard uh, not so long ago to, with a woman that you, you will know the name of when I mention it when I come back. So, folks, we'll be back in two minutes for Alan and Steve. Lads, okay. I'll talk to you in a couple of seconds. Okay. Now, lads, you're very welcome back. Um, t- 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 one thing I just wanted to mention to you, was there a, there's a lady that I read a book, right? It was a 100-page book, and you can get it online in PDF format. Uh, it's, a, it's a woman called um, Mary Elizabeth. Oh, God, I can't think of it. Do you know her surname? Croft. I can't think of her surname for the life of me. Croft. Croft, yeah. Mary Elizabeth Croft, that's it. Yes, yes. Now, she, I don't know if you've read the book or listened to her interviews. She's only done, I think she's done one big interview on Red Eyes. I haven't really heard it anywhere else. But she maintains that everything in our lives has already been paid for. You know, and the, the, basically what we should be doing is drawing on credit that's already in place. And the fact that we're paying for stuff means that we're, we're being doubly ripped off, basically. Do you, do you think there's any truth into, in, in what she's saying? And does that tie into any of this Nassara t- thing, you know? Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it does. I just want to clarify something for your listeners as well. Nassara, if this does happen, Nassara is going to be the first one to to uh, kick off the collateral accounts are is later now drake did not give out a date but he said it should be done and dusted by the end of the year it just depends whether he they get any uh, resistance or not that's really what it, it's down to so we won't give he won't give a date out but he said it should be done and dusted by by the end of the year for both of them if the if what he's saying is true some people say it's a big hoax and you know it's not going to happen as i say for entertainment purposes only. As to Mary Elizabeth Croft, yes, I do believe that. I mean, put it this way. When you register, when, you, when somebody registers their child, they become a bond. And the government sell uh, your bond, your future earnings. So you, you obviously must have some value to the government for them to do that. I think that's Mary Elizabeth Croft's um, angle, that because of that value, while you're alive as a flesh and blood human being, you should be allowed to tap into that value. Totally, totally. And I think that's what they were doing until the system was shut down. So I think there's, there's an awful lot of things going on. I'm, I'll pass over to Steve as well. Um, I, there's an awful lot of things going on that we don't understand how the system is set up. Um, like, I mean, take, for example, you probably heard about Josephine Feely stepping down, Mick. I did, yes. I mean, didn't you garner some information from her regarding the law Well, best, uh, in relation to income tax that there isn't one? Well, she made a statement herself on the Inland Revenue website. It wasn't got to do with me. It was actually right. Vin, Vin from PIR who found it. And then I just happened to email the, the TDs and uh, just asked them about, are we in a representative democracy? And sent the, the, the article that Josephine Feely put up on the Inland Revenue website. And that, 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 removed, has it? Well, that was, that was on Monday and Tuesday. And then we heard on Thursday that Josephine was stepping down. Coincidence, I don't know. And was the article removed from the internet? I don't. From the, I, I don't know whether it's still up there, but I do have a copy of it. Right. I mean, it is a bit strange that you know, as you said, she puts that article up saying that 
income taxes, voluntary compliance, or words to that effect. And then a few days later, then she steps down with a, a nice fat pension for herself. Well, none of the TDs came back to me and, uh, and said to me, yes, we are in a representative democracy and we are taxed by consent. None of them came back and said it. Why? If we are in a representative democracy, as Josephine Feely said, why didn't they come back and say, yes, we are? What's the reason? And I, that's why I want to know. Yeah, because they didn't want to expose the dictatorship that is the Oireachtas. There you go. Yeah. No, I think that's that. That's what it looks like to me. And I'm no, I'm not a, a political expert. I just, you know, gone by what I've heard in regards to the Oireachtas, how the Oireachtas came about and stuff like that. You know, the, the the powers that be don't want the masses known that the Oireachtas is a British construct, and there is a British construct. It's in black and white. Well, not, you know, there's no way from that. Not only that, Mick. I mean, what would happen if people realised that you do, you didn't have to pay tax on your earnings? You only had to pay tax on your corporate profits. You know, it's a, that, that is nuts. I mean, you know, because I mean, I know plenty of people who are out there working, they're paying mortgages, and that, that's like struggling, they're genuinely struggling. You know, people who are unemployed and getting, you know, unemployment benefits or whatever, are fared now better than they are because they, they have a small bit of disposable income. Where poor people who are out there, you know, literally busting a good 40, 50 hours a week, they've got nothing to show for at the end of the week. Well, here's the, here's the this question. Or they pay water charges. Yeah, well, here's, the, them. here's the question I put to your listeners, okay? In all the time, you have to look at the history of income tax. You have to look at it, right? But I'll ask you all your listeners, in all the jobs they've worked in, have they ever been shown the law to say, this is why this big chunk of money is coming out of your salary to pay tax, and here's the law that says you have to pay it? Now, I've asked that to so many people, and nobody has turned around and said, yeah, I've seen the law. All they say is, but that's what I was told. Mm. Nobody has... Did you ever see the movie Freedom to Fascism, Marilyn Russo? Oh, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that's the concept that the movie's about. Uh, there was one character in it, um, I think he was a farmer or something, or a landowner, and the, the Inland Revenue, whatever they're called over there, the IRS, wanted to hit him for tax for, for, for not declaring his income and stuff like that. And his mantra throughout the, all his interviews was, show me the law that requires you to pay tax. And there was even some tax officials who worked for the IRS were sent away to go look for this law, couldn't find it, copped on to what was going on and had the good conscience to resign their positions. Yeah. Because they couldn't in all good conscience go around hitting people with tax demands when they knew there was no lawful obligation to do so. Yeah, they showed, there was, uh, I think there was 10,000 put up for anybody that could show the law and all the IR, uh, IRS agents were rubbing their hands together going, oh, this is going to be easy. But they couldn't find it. I think Steve something to say about it as well. Yeah, yes, Dave. I, I might have mentioned this before previously, but again, there, there could be a whole new audience listening this evening. I actually know LA, I, like some people are probably saying, oh yeah, that's Aaron Russo, that's freedom the fascism, it's America, it, it's all happening over there. But it plays over here as well. It does, because I actually know a, a lady, she's a friend of mine, and she works in the tax office, and I, I put this to her a couple of years back, and I asked her, when all this kind of starts surfacing, and I, I start to learn about it, I put the question to her. I said, can you can you do me a favor? Can you check and see if you can find me the law within the tax office that says I, the flesh and blood man, am required to pay tax on my earnings, my sweat earnings? And she, she laughed. And she said, yeah, I'll have it for you in the morning. She says, of course it exists. And I said, no, okay, I'm, I'm not going to doubt it. But I said, if you, if you can get it for me, I said, because there's so much information going around the internet saying you're not required she went off, she had a look. I think it, it may have been about a fortnight later, Mick. She rang me back and she said, eh, that question you asked me, I've asked people who were on, and she was, she, was, she was in there a long time, I've asked people on my pay grade, she says, to look into it. I've looked into it. I've even asked a couple of friends on a, on a higher up the, the chain of command in the, in the, the tax office uh, to look into it as well. And she says, I can't believe it, but she said, there is actually no law that says that you have to pay tax, that it's mandatory. She couldn't find it. Even she was stumped. Now, up to that point, you know, she went in, she'd done her nine to five, she never questioned it. And ever since then, she's been questioning more and more and more. And I have to say, her mind is so open today, it's unbelievable. Now, she, she still works in there, but say, she, she looks at things from from different kind of perspective now. Yeah. I mean, it's mad because I, I imagine that they were investigating someone who's not paying their taxes, allegedly, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're looking at them as if they're a criminal, whereas if people like that lady friend of yours 
have the information, well, then they would look at somebody then in a more favourable light, I suppose, you know what I mean, and give them a better chance well, to, to defend themselves rather than just label them a non-taxpaying criminal or whatever, you know? Yeah, well, it's very easy. If people, if the law is there, get people ring up the, ta- the Inland Revenue Tax Office and ask them for a copy of the law. They won't get it. Billy McGuire is asking as well in regards to where this war, show us your licence. Where's your licence to accept money from people? Yeah. You know, because in this country, in the Sovereign Republic of Ireland, you need a licence to accept money from people. It's just like the National Lottery, post office, banks, wherever. If you're dealing the money, you need a licence to deal the money. So well, where's the licence? I mean, that's a simple yeah. enough question to be asking these people. Yeah. Now, Irish Water is going to be brought to court. There's three uh, cases, I think, being brought against them. And there's people in the background who won't reveal who they are, but there are people who are helping to fight uh, this case. Now, we also have, um, you probably want us to mention, anyway, I, I, I hope so, we have Barry Trow on next week, who's an expert in uh, Wi-Fi, wireless technology. And basically, Barry's going to um, tell us about the dangers of the water meters, which could be technically brought to court and challenged in court. Because they, they, they are smart meters, aren't they? Like, they're transmitting information. Um, the yeah, the yeah, yeah. Or are they just manual machines that an inspector will have to come out and open up the shore to, to read the numbers. No, they are smart they're meters. Not transmit remotely. They, no, they are pass- smart meters. They're passive transmitters. But they're, they're transmitting on the frequency of 433. Some of them are different frequencies, but anything over 300 is microwave and dangerous. Now, for, for anyone who doesn't, you know, think that radio frequencies or microwave frequencies can affect the human body, folks, you know, everything is made of energy, including us, and we, we, we resonate in a particular frequency. The frequency that we as human beings resonate is known as the Schumann resonance. It's the same frequency the planet basically beats on. Well, the thing is with, with, with the likes of, say, for example, Wi-Fi, it's pulsed non-ionized radiation, right? So how, how, do you, how do you define how this works and will it affect you? Well, basically what I say is this. When you sit in a room, a dark room, and you switch on the light, that doesn't affect you. But sit in the room and have somebody switch the light on and off 24-7 and you sit there and then tell me after 24 hours whether that has affected you or not. Yeah, because, you, know, <laughs> you know, it would hurt your eyes, I suppose. That was something else I heard about Wi-Fi technology of a guest I had on here not so long ago called John Weagle. I remember the first guy I had on? Yeah. And I remember he was telling me that um, the, 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 the daylight, you know, uh, when it's daylight, natural daylight, that... That light frequency, you know, it has a certain effect on the brain. It wakes you up, blah, 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 and your brain needs that daylight. Yeah. What he was saying was when you're going to sleep at night with a mobile phone in your house or in your, you know, in your bedroom and a Wi-Fi signal moving around your home, your brain cannot differentiate between normal daylight and those microwave signals. As far as your brain is concerned, they're the same. So, you know, you think you're going to sleep, but you've got these microwave signals, so you're not even getting proper sleep. And I mean, it explains an awful lot when you see people walking around these days like zombies. You know, they're, they're going to bed, they're getting eight hours sleep, but they're getting up the next morning and they're wrecked all day. They're ready for a kit by 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, definitely. Well, Steve will tell you a story about his wife and uh, phone. Steve, if you want to tell me that one. Is this the one where it's never over hand? <laughs> 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 that as well, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Actually, Mick, it's, 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 it's funny you should mention that because uh, my, we used to have the decked phones, the, the digital uh, wireless phones. They're, they're gone now, needless to say. But we had them. And after I, I learned this information, uh, the base station of the particular handset, decked handset, was on my, my, my wife's bedside locker. And once I learned the information, I, I didn't get rid of the phone straight away, but I moved the base station, I moved it downstairs, and I just moved the, the regular handset upstairs, I was just on a little charging unit. And mm. it was only a, bit, a couple of days after I'd done that, she said to me, geez, I'm after having, the, the last couple of nights, I'm after having great, really good night's sleep. And I says, okay, why were you not sleeping? She said, no, I was kind of having broken sleep. And, and uh, I said, well, okay, the only thing I've done, I said, I've, I learned that that, base station is pumping out the signal 24 7 i said so when you're lying there at night it's pumping it straight into you and i said i've mm. learned that that's dangerous so i've moved downstairs and she says when did you do that i said about maybe two days ago and she says yeah i've, I've really had good night's sleep so then that was kind of confirmation to me that there definitely is something in it again we looked into it a little bit further we had some experts on we had uh, barry trower on we got so much information that I eventually just got, got the deck phones, as Alan did, got the deck phones, the microwave, the Wi-Fi, got rid of the whole lot. Everything, everything in my home and Alan's home now, it's just, everything's wired. There's, there's no Wi-Fi floating around at all. Now, I must admit, I do have Wi-Fi at home. He's out now. I've got a wireless home in the sitting room. Um, 
it, 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 it goes some way to explain it quite a few things. But um, like, like the kids have a PlayStation, and that's jacked straight into it, so there's no Wi-Fi in that respect. But like I do have my own laptop out in the kitchen area, and like that is it, it, it does work on Wi-Fi. Do you know what I mean? So you know, I'm not totally getting away. I might have to start wrapping tin foil around my head. I think you know. It's it's not just you, Mick, but it's your kids. You know. Well, that's true as well. Yes, that's I know. Um, but like you said, even if you don't have it in your home, we're still surrounded by it, though. You know, you just go down the road, there's masks, they're everywhere. Yeah, no, totally. So, Look, you won't get away from it, but what, it's all about reduction. It's all about reducing your exposure to the signal. Now, I know, I mean, where I live, I, there's, not a mo- there's a mobile fo- phone mask quite close to me. Um, lucky enough, whatever what way the building, uh, the house is made, it doesn't kind of come into the house. But I, like Steve, we've, we've wired our computers, we've got rid of the Wi-Fi um, uh, and the deck phones and the microwave. And although there might be some kind of signals around, it's going to be a lot less than what we have. Well, less than what was there. Yeah, well, that's, you know, it's not a, not a bad thing. Listen, lads, I am coming up to the end of the show. Do you want to give out the name of the website? Your own website, just for the listeners. Yeah, Steve, cheat away. Okie dokie, yeah, li- uh, I was going to say Livy Sound. <laughs> no, that's yours. Uh, that's o- open OYM Radio, that's O. F- OYMRadio.com is the website. Again, we're on every Sunday evening from 7 to 9 in the PM, and it's always fun. We always have inter- entertaining guests on. We have a chat room you as do, well, yeah. and people can log in and, and chat amongst yourselves, ask questions. It's it's always fun. It's it's like it's kind of dealing with serious issues with a bit of fun, a bit of light entertainment. And you have to you have to you have to have a comedy slant on all the the negativity I suppose that was surrounded by every day. You do. But listen, lads, I have to come to the end of the show. So would, on behalf of myself, my producer, my director, and my creative director, all myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for coming on the world. You don't know. Cheers, Mick. Thanks, Thanks for Mick. having us. Good evening. Also. Thanks very much, lads. Good evening, dears. Take care. Bye bye. Now, folks, that was Alan and Steve from Open Your Mind Ireland. And um, I just want to say a quick thanks to um, Ray over in the UK. Um, for, for, for giving me some information there, he was talking about, um, I'm just going to get it up here now, just give me a second here, boom, boom. Yes, he was saying that uh, the, the guy that Alan was talking about, the super soldier, John, um, Ray was saying he's the, he's the real thing. He set up the interviews for the lads with this guy. So um, he'd be quite an interesting character. So if you want to listen more about him, you can go onto his website. He does have a website there. Now, I've got it up there. Just let me see. It's called John Irwin, U-R-W-I-N. That's J-O-H-N-U-R-W-I-N.com, JohnIrwin.com. And he claims to have been a super soldier. Now, I have his website up there, and he does have a video on it there, Benjamin Friedman, Friedman's 1961 speech where he's warning America about the future in relation to Zionism and stuff like that. Quite a fascinating um, speech. I've heard it a few times myself. That's one definitely worth listening to. But... um. I just want to mention as well that I, there is a new website now for the show. Um, it's called the world you don't know dot wordpress dot com. You can go on there and get some podcasts and stuff like that, and you can listen to the podcast. But um, until next week, folks, this has been the world you don't know. Take care and be good to yourselves. Talk to you all soon.